Whenever someone is looking up alternative cancer cures, I'm often asked, what's the harm? You know, they're just looking at complementary or additional or alternative therapies. And I'll tell you why I have such a problem with it and I'm often accused of being a killjoy or whatever else, but there's a good reason for it. Let's take a recent case of the former model, Irina Stoinova. She was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in June 2021. Now, she needed chemotherapy, which would have most likely been of huge benefit to her. But she started believing the mantra that the body heals itself and started following influencers online that were saying pretty much the same thing, that you could cure your cancer with diet, that you could cure it with alternative therapy, that you could cure it with random bits of esoteric Eastern philosophy that railroaded into a very commercially lucrative package that they just so happened to sell. And unfortunately, she fell for that. This holistic and functional therapy she was reading about because they were always sold online with great testimonials. People were saying, wow, it saved my life, or they would have doctors on saying, isn't it great? Now, unfortunately, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, immunotherapy, stuff that actually works for cancer can be quite scary. It can have side effects. What these people were doing online were telling her they had a, basically a miracle cure for her that would sort it all out with none of that hassle stuff. And so she tried to cure her cancer with juicing diets with ridiculous holistic therapies that had no basis in fact. And she almost died. And she is one of the lucky ones because she was, her life was salvageable. She got very sick, she lost a huge amount of weight and she was on death's door, but she survived. And she's now telling people not to do this. And her advice is good here. We should listen to her. A paper I always refer back to when people ask, is this a common story, is this. It's from Skylar Johnson in 2018 in JAMA Oncology. And it's a paper I really like because it makes a point, And he was one of the first people to quantify this, right? This is a Kaplan-Meier survival curve and it tells a story. It compared people that got conventional cancer therapy and those that got it, but also went down the alternative complementary route. And you'll see from this curve that people that went down the complementary route had a much higher rate of death. In fact, as you go down, the rate of dying was double that from the other group. What was happening? Well, they were delaying their conventional therapies or they were refusing them in some cases until sometimes it was too late. A classic example of that happening was Steve Jobs. And I often ask my students, why did Steve Jobs die? He had a cancer that was curable, right? That we had a therapy for. And yet, we know that Steve Jobs, one of the, at the time, richest, most famous men in the world, he actually died of that cancer. And the reason why was instead of getting the therapy that his oncologist begged him to take that would have probably saved his life, almost certainly would have saved his life, he went down the road of juicing diets, Gerson therapy, stuff that is nonsense, right? And unfortunately, by the time he realized it wasn't working, his cancer was too advanced for them to do anything, and he died from it. We know his story because he is famous. He was Steve Jobs. You know, if you were into Apple, you know Steve Jobs. And he was well-educated and he had every luxury in the world. But I have heard over the years I've been doing this stuff, dozens of times, people telling me about loved ones they lost because they went down that road. And they aren't sung heroes. And they're not like Irina Stoinova who survived and lived to tell the tale. These are people that lost family members and said, yeah, they, they, they went down holistic therapy routes or they decided they'd use cannabis oil for their cancer or a miracle diet and by the way diet definitely doesn't cure cancer it cannot Liz and I did a paper on this recently I'll link it up down here and yet because people want to believe that it they suffer for it and the worst thing is it's incredibly lucrative when these people put big testimonials online telling you they should go for the therapies they will always disparage conventional medicine they'll put it down because they can't sell their product otherwise Right? That is the whole thing. These people are charlatans at, they are either deliberately exploiting people's fear or they are dangerously ignorant and shouldn't be allowed near it or a sick combination of the both. And it just so happens the therapies they always sell and the miracle cures they claim to have, well, they're also selling them, aren't they? They stand to profit from them and they don't really care if you live or die. They care that they get your money and the attention that they want. Please don't give it to them. If you have cancer, if you are suffering cancer, right? Trust your oncologist, talk to them. They will guide you through evidence-based practice. If you know someone going through cancer, you might think you're being helpful if you send them some Instagram page or TikTok video on something that is a miracle cure. You're not being helpful. You're being an ass. Because actually, if they're selling it on Instagram, it's not real, okay? Oncologists don't go and sell 
chemotherapy drugs on Instagram for a reason. We don't sell radiotherapy on Instagram for a reason because evidence-based medicine doesn't work that way, right? If they stand to profit from it, you cannot be trusting them on this. They are not doing this out of the goodness of their heart. And you are not helping people with cancer by saying, them, oh, maybe this will be useful for you, or maybe you should consider this, or have you tried this? Let people with cancer talk to their oncologists and get professional, expert opinion. And anyone else we see sharing so-called miraculous treatments for cancer, miraculous cures, miraculous diets, we should treat them with the contempt they deserve. Because they are, whether they mean to be or not, grade A assholes. Right. Stay safe out there. I write about this a lot in the book because it just it frustrates me so much. But I have seen so many patients taken advantage of. And I've talked to a lot of people who've lost loved ones because of this. Irina Stoinova is one of the lucky ones. And it's good that she's sharing her story to help people realize what can happen. But there are so many people that don't make it to her stage. So please stay safe.